In this tutorial, I'll be walking you through how to use Frame.io's groundbreaking collaboration tools and how they interact with Final Cut Pro 10 via their workflow extension architecture. Before Frame.io can be accessed within Final Cut Pro, you must first download the Frame.io app from the Mac App Store. You'll need to launch the app at least once, then it will appear in the upper toolbar by clicking the Extensions button. The app opens in a floating window that can be resized and placed anywhere that's convenient to work with. If you don't want the extensions window blocking the UI, I found the best solution is to resize the Final Cut UI and place the extension window to the left of the browser so that it's in close proximity to the media I'll be working with. Then by saving the layout as a custom workspace, I can quickly reconstitute the workspace whenever I need it. In the timeline is a promo video Mark and I are working on for a Napa Valley winery. The edit is finished, but needs some motion graphics. I've placed red to-do markers on the clips that need some love for Mark. So the first thing I need to do is send him a movie of my project so that he can view my markers as comments in Frame.io. I'll locate the project in the media browser, right-click on it and choose Share Project. Then choose the Frame.io H.264 sharing preset for faster uploading. By the way, these share destinations will only appear if you've installed them during your initial installation of the Frame.io Mac app. If you don't see them, open the Mac app from the toolbar and click on Account Settings from the gear menu. I'll click Next to bring up Frame.io's exporter, and from here I can upload a flattened version of my timeline, individual clips, or both. I only want to export my timeline as a reference clip for Mark, making sure it includes my to-do markers so they'll be translated into comments. Next, I'll create a new project, name it, click Create, and then Upload. The Frame.io app in the menu bar shows the upload in progress. Once uploaded, I'll click this button to refresh, open the project, Then open the movie in the player to view my comments. Clicking this button will link the Frame.io playhead with the Final Cut Pro playhead, so that when I click on any comment in the list, the Final Cut Pro playhead will jump to that marker in the timeline. As you'll see shortly, this feature will be indispensable once I start receiving comments back from Mark. The next step is to upload the highest quality clips for the titles he'll be creating. To make this really simple, I've created an event labeled Motion Graphics, where I've placed the clips he's going to need. I'll go back to the main project, then drag the clips directly into the extension window. They'll be uploaded in their native resolution, but for viewing and commenting purposes, they'll be transcoded to proxies. Frame.io has just notified me that Mark has started giving me some feedback. I'll click the icon to open the player and comment list. His comments appear as avatars along the bottom of the player. I'll enable the Link Playhead button, then click through his comments. My Final Cut Pro Playhead jumps to those specific comment locations in my timeline, so there's no guessing as to which clips I need to address. Additionally, I can drag on the Frame.io Playhead, and the Final Cut Pro Playhead stays in perfect sync with it. I'll scrub over this time-lapse clip of the sunrise, then park the Playhead just as the sun is peeking over the mountain range. I'll add a comment for Mark that I want the title to come in here, and use the Annotation tool to define where I'd like the title placed. If I know I'll be working offline and need all the comments converted to markers, I can click the Import button, then drag the comment clip into the timeline as a connected compound clip. All comments appear as markers along the top of the clip. Moving the playhead over a marker displays the comments as a text overlay, along with the timecode of where the comment was added. If you have more than one collaborator that's commented on your video, you can reveal them as comment roles in the timeline index. In this case, there are two comment roles, one for Mark and one for myself. I'll disable my role since I already have markers for those in the primary storyline. When a role is disabled, the text overlay will be invisible until you re-enable the role. And if I don't want to see my markers at all, I can jump into the Tags pane, select all the markers that are redundant, and press Delete. If the compound clip is taking up too much screen real estate, 
You can select it and break apart clip items using the clip menu. Then delete the timecode clip. All the markers remain attached to their original frames. OK, while I was showing you all that, Mark uploaded his first motion graphic. Man, does he work fast. Here it is, and if I select it and press the spacebar, I can get a quick preview of it without having to open it in the player. And there's my graphic, exactly where I wanted to see it. To add this clip to my timeline, I'll right-click and choose Import. Before I can add this clip to my timeline, Frame.io has to create a local copy on my hard drive. I can select the full quality version or a proxy version. Since this is my master project, I'll select the full HD version and click Import. A green check mark appears on the thumbnail, letting me know that I can now drag this clip into my timeline and replace the placeholder clip. I'll play that back. How cool is that? Frame.io's workflow extension app and Final Cut Pro 10 are the perfect companion for fast, accurate, and seamless collaboration with your team.